Hey guys, what's up? Uh, I want to do a video on... This is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to go over my thought process as I'm doodling freeform. And uh, I think that will be of some benefit to some people. Uh, just kind of get you the thought process of what's going on in my mind as I'm even just kind of doodling for it. Just, just purely enjoyment. Uh, it is similar to the series of where I'm kind of doing stuff in my sketchbook. But uh, it's a little bit different uh and a little more informal so I, I think you get a lot of benefit out of this uh, stick around to the end of the video i'll try not to lag i'll try not to go on horrendously long but uh let's get going first right off the bat i use this all the time i, I don't know why i'm addicted to this pen it's a zebra uh f301 uh i'll put it in the description for amazon and normally when i'm just looking for what i'm gonna just mess around with and draw I'm thinking about what uh, I've seen probably lately. Usually it'll be like, what show have I watched lately? Or what comic have I read? Or uh, you know what manga or anime I've watched? And then I'm gonna just, I just kind of scratch along in my mind here. And I'm, I'm, well, no, I'm on paper, I'm scratching these really vague little scratches and I'm like, what do I want? What do I feel like drawing? Uh, consequently, this is the first thing I'm drawing all day, so you're also seeing my warm-up. Uh, I love drawing, you know, monstrous stuff, so I usually stick to that for first drawings, just because I feel like it, it gains me momentum. Momentum's a big thing. Uh, momentum is... You know, it, it is, it's such a huge thing integral to your drawing when, when you're kind of uh, starting out. Uh, and th that can be the great part of, like I said, doing with, sticking with what you're good at. And that, not, that's obviously not a great idea because you gotta, you wanna venture out and become much more well-rounded. But uh, at least for warm-ups, I mean, it might, it might be a good idea to kind of warm up with something you're already good at drawing. And push out toward that because then you're getting a feel for it uh, and you're you are getting already these little successes you know uh, and it'll, it'll kind of push at you in your mind to be like oh, okay I can already do that like um, at least okay you know <laughs> uh, are there mornings where I wake up and I feel horrendous um, yeah there's definitely drawing days where I'm like man I can't draw anything you know, or I'm making these really simple mistakes I shouldn't be making at this point. You know, things like that. And that, that's that's always gonna happen. That happens to almost every artist I know. Uh, especially if you have a bit of a like a regular life. You know, other things come into play. You're not just dedicating your life to this. I mean, of course, you're dedicating a big chunk of time, and most likely, uh, if you are a career artist, it will be your whole life. But uh, I mean, a big part of your life, but don't be a slave only to it. It's good to get out, talk to people. It's good to have a social life. I, I learned that a long time ago. It really hurt me when I didn't have a social life. It actually made me a lot worse when I didn't. Uh, some people it doesn't do that, so you know, kind of pick who you are. If you do need to get out uh, every now and then, you know, to have a social life, do it, or uh, even more than that if that's important to you. I learned that it was really, really important to me. Let's see. What could I do, and I'm thinking in my mind here, what can I do to make this, uh, it's already gone down a road that is a common road, but I'm like, what can I do to change this a little bit? What would be a little bit weird? And I mean, Obviously, there's only so much you can do because everything's been done, but what can I do to make it not just... Because right now it's heading toward a skull. What can I do to make it not purely just a skull? And I will mess with the mouth area, the teeth. Will I, I'm not going to make it fang. I mean, fangs are cool and stuff. They really are. They're very spawn-like. And there's a reason why people do a lot of the same things over and over again. It's because they're attractive uh, to the viewer. Uh, you know, even and the artist as well. So what can I do here? Um, uh, one giant tooth? No. Let me see all of them. No. Very Shao Kani. 
Okay, this is probably Shao Kahn because I am probably thinking about him because I've been playing a lot of Mortal Kombat 11. Like, I mean, a ton of it. Uh, story mode mostly right now. But, uh. Let me see. Okay, so. Or maybe I can do some underneath there. Hmm. So if I got his face right here. Let me see. I'm kind of racking my mind here. So if I was wearing the. If they were wearing a skull mask, or is it even a skull mask? Would it be part of their anatomy, maybe? Uh, yeah, let me see. So if I'm pulling this, and I'm still working with these vague shapes, kind of like, what am I going to do here? Maybe I'll make it skinny and long. Like he's roaring, but he's got like a really long thin mouth, like an alien, as opposed to as opposed to a crazy jaw. I guess I could do that, kind of stretch it out a little bit, like Dolly, just stretch it out. Yeah, that might, that might, that already looks a little bit different than normal, because I'm stretching this far, far out. So you learn the rules to break them, that's a large thing, and I say that constantly. You're learning the basic rules of drawing and art in order to take them and kind of use them in your own way and you can again stick to a uh, structure obviously I always recommend sticking to structure but you can also break that stuff and uh, and you can usually tell who breaks it uh, in a good way who does it in a bad way Dolly's a good one breaking it in a good way you know he, he knew how to paint and draw but he also took it and did all kinds of weird stuff with it let me see. Mass. I don't know what I want here. Maybe I'm gonna make his skull a little bit thinner than I thought I was gonna make it. Then we give him some kind of horns. But I want to think. See, I don't know. It's already. I don't want to think like Batman or anything like that or horns like that. Like, I want to think more like a bug. What is bug like? What can I throw in there that is me? I don't know why bugs came to my mind randomly. So what can I... Like a dung beetle or something? Nah, that's gonna be... That's not gonna work. So I like the flow that I'm, I'm getting right here. There's this kind of directional flow right here. And so I don't want to break that. So that's kind of the first thing going in my mind. Or maybe I can throw little tiny eyeballs in his cheeks, which might be dumb, but I could try it. And this is about experimentation. Not everything you do is going to work. I mean, some things you're going to do and you're like, wow, I totally broke the drawing. But that, that's the point. When you're, when you're doing this stuff, a big, especially when you're doodling for yourself, a big part of that is experimentation. Um, and I think I got to, I don't know if I went over that already, right? Like the, you know what? I don't know if I went over that. The, the skull, um, the sketchbooks that you carry, you know, I carry like a private sketchbook for myself, you know, one that you don't show anybody like with this one, j j junk. And I got to show that one eventually on this, on this channels. And then you have a sketchbook that you show people in public. Uh, <laughs> that's how a lot of people do it, which is kind of a messed up thing, but it's true. And then you show one with more like cleaned up, you know, you know, it's almost like a mini portfolio. Just kind of cleaned up drawings, you know, something that's presentable enough, nothing too horrendously bad. Uh, and that's almost almost everybody I know. Not 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 every single person, but but almost every single artist I've met does that. Uh, they will carry like two. Let me see this. Okay, so do I want to give him pupils or not? Well. I don't really want to give him pupils. I think it looks cool without pupils. I like stuff like Scorpion or, or Spawn, or things of that sort where they don't have pupils, so I'm not going to do it for this. But I want to I want to make sure that this thing on his cheek here, I want to make sure that reads as a eyeball, you know? So that might be kind of hard to do that uh, if without eyes. So... So I'm gonna have to throw that in there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to throw in. Uh, 
an iris and a pupil. Hopefully you can see this enough. I apologize if it's too light. Uh, I apologize for my hand being in the way. Uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do. I had to do that to make those redesign balls. It's pretty relaxing for me, actually. How's everybody doing, by the way? Is everybody good out there? Say hi to me in the comments. Uh, I even love hearing that. I don't know why. It just kind of brightens my afternoon. Just people saying hi, even. Uh, I started uh, going to the gym again, so I feel like I got hit by a car right now because I didn't stretch very well, and so I feel super sore. I didn't stretch before, after. I, mean, I stretch before, but not so much after. So I feel really, really sore. So. I'm walking around like an old man, you know, like my back hurts and stuff, so that's annoying. I volunteer at a uh, hostel over here. I take guests out at night to hang out, essentially, for activities. Um, that's a great volunteer job. It's really fun. I did it because I did art shows at that hostel. Uh, and I was doing art shows and the guy had told me, hey, do you want to... Uh, well, basically, he became my friend, the guy who worked there. And he's, he's a really cool guy. I'm still his friend. And he was like, Hey, why don't you volunteer here and you can get free, uh, you know, um, free stay at some other place, some other hostels of the same brand. Um, just for doing volunteer work. And I was like, sure, I could save money. And now that's what I do. <laughs> I do that. Uh, I've done it for about a year. So it's really, really fun. I get a lot of cool deals and announcements. If you don't know what a hostel is, a hostel is basically like a cheap motel. It's it's like a motel, but it's for, it's a little different. It's for travelers, so they'll have like, you know, six beds, you know, and it's all bunk beds. And people will usually just stay there for a couple days. And they have activities for guests to kind of meet each other, uh, like barbecues and stuff like that. And so that, that, a big part of that is being social uh, for a lot. So they have them, uh, a lot more in Europe, I believe, but they do have a ton in the U.S. And uh, that's one of the ones I do it at. Is... But yeah, it's really, really fun to do. But uh, anyways, back to the drawing. Uh, I'm going here, and I'm just kind of evening out some of these lines. So you're, you're and you know this, you're, you're gathering, um, you're doing things in layers. So I'm doing an initial layer for proportion for this weird thing I'm doing. It's like a bent out of the shape skull. And I'm doing my primary layer. And that usually what that does is it gives me a safety net. So it's a structure of the head. I got kind of the idea of the structure of the head. And so from, you know, at this point I could add like an eyeball in the middle of his forehead or or, you know, or some other thing, an ear in his head or something, you know, like that stuff is secondary. But the prime, uh, you know, because it's all on top of the the, the foundation first uh, of, of the skull. So that's kind of cool. And I like getting that foundational part out of the way so that I can mess around with it. You can break it though, don't get me wrong. If I had like 10 different ears over here, I could just break the drawing and it'll be like, oh, this just doesn't look right anymore. Um, so. But, for the most part, it, it does give you a pretty solid base to mess around with. Um, so I do like that part. I actually like getting that first part out of the way, in all honesty. So right here, for example, right, the teeth. The fang, do I want to have them connect or do I want to have them like insert like regular teeth? So I'm going to have them insert like the way, you know, regular teeth insert. Do I want teeth in the middle here? Sure. I'll do that. And still, just kind of maintaining my general amusement here because this is a sketch. This is not something for work or anything of that sort. So I'm just kind of doing what I feel like at this point. What do I feel like doing? And that sounds really corny and new age, but I mean, what, what am I feeling pretty content here with my drawing? 
yeah, feeling pretty good. You know, feeling, uh, because when you put pressure on yourself, it's, uh, it's really not a good thing and you don't you don't generally get a better I mean you could get a really good result of course but generally it's not a great idea to put that much pre like so much pressure that you burn yourself out because then it's not gonna become like I say I say this a lot it's not become fun anymore so you want to keep it fun and keep it real uh, but yeah also keeping it real uh, don't forget to pick up uh, the uh, I have a sketchbook that I did and it's a printed out sketchbook if you want to support me. Uh, I will sell I sell it on this channel. Let me show it real quick because I have it. Do I have it somewhere? I don't know if I have it. Oh my god. It is a sketchbook that I've been selling for roughly a year. And it's a, a bunch of my sketches. And it's all stuff I never posted. Although you're going to see it now, right? But it's about 24 pages. Uh, and I do have that online still. I have, a, I've, uh, I think I sold through half of my copies. And uh, once I sell them out, I'm, that's pretty much it, to be honest. But uh, yeah, I do have uh, definitely have like half of them left, or half of them. I, I, let me see. I sold half of them. I don't know how many I have left, but um, go check that out. I'll put the link in the description if you want to support. Uh, if you join my Patreon, you get one of those for free. I mean, if you join my Patreon, I think at a certain tier, you get one of those for free. But yeah, th that's pretty much the same process I'm doing now. Just kind of doodling for the pure enjoyment of it, and just kind of you know living, living, uh, doing this art thing. I, I, like keep maintaining your love for art because so I would say one of the biggest things is that so many people lose that. So many people lose it. So many people lose their love for art, and they just kind of. I don't know. They just kind of like, well, you know, it just becomes becomes work, and they're like, oh, I don't feel inspired. And then it's like they have to push through every single thing they do for years after that, until they either quit or they get a company job, and then I guess they kind of, you know, they kind of forced to do it. And they can be either miserable or happy there. It depends. Going into the teeth here, just kind of. Going around with us. Somebody's outside, outside my window. It's freaking me out. Going over here, the t doing the insertions of the teeth here. I'm gonna give him little tiny teeth in the middle of that. Don't want to give him a tongue. I'm gonna give him the inner section of his of his uh, mouth though. But I think a tongue would be I don't know over the top, which can be good I guess right because this, this drawing is kind of over the top. Um, do I want a background to this? Do I not? Is this like this is just so far a general doodle? Do I? Maybe. Maybe. Do I want a background? I mean, um, well, maybe I'm gonna give him. Yeah, some kind of like fire design in the back here, maybe. I don't really know. I don't really know what these are gonna be, actually. I'm thinking fire like a demon, right? But. Do I want them to make sense? That's another one. Like, is this gonna make sense or is this not? And do I need it to? Because again, this is a doodle. In a, in a, in a obviously, if something for a client or a real publication, or if you're doing that kind of stuff, then yeah, that that has to make sense. You have to figure it out, um, or at least it has to look, um, you know, presentable for a client. But this, since I'm just doing it for pure enjoyment. I don't need it. I don't need it to make sense per se. I don't want it to look repetitive. That's another thing. I mean, it's gonna look repetitive, but I don't. I want it to look a little different enough, you know. So I got these kind of strange, staggering shapes here. Yeah, alrighty, and I don't think I want. I don't think I want to carry them through to the top. Do I? I am, but they're gonna get bigger as they get up. Even though that's probably a mistake. I 
All right. I got a, a series of these lines, right? So now I'm kind of like, I want to vignette them. How do I want to vignette them? I am going to make some of them really dark to make this other image pop. At this point, I'm going to change pens. Not totally, but I'm going to use a straight up regular ballpoint pen. And I am going to... Make some of these things extremely see dark. And I'm just gonna the reason for that is I'm I mean I'm kinda just gonna wrap up this doodle. And to do that I am going to kinda give focus in a rather quick way. So I'm gonna put some darks to make parts of the image kind of pop out more. And I'm just going to give key points, uh, mostly to make the head pop out. Even on the head itself, I want it to, there's parts of that I want it to, to pop out on as well. Continuing to push that. It's pretty, pretty, yeah, still, still just kind of figuring out shapes here. I'm going to throw, I'm going to push some darks as dark as that um, cause I'm pushing pretty dang hard on the paper I'm gonna push it toward the eyeballs and the nose because I, I still want like a good that focus so I'm gonna push it really hard Even though these eyes are less focal, I still want to push them a little bit in the eyeball over here. That one's a little bit closer than that one. Oh well. That's life. And I, and I don't want to push the darks too hard because if I do push it too hard, I'm going to have to um, completely push the entire thing uh, darker. And I don't want to do that. This could be too much work for a doodle. Um, do it here in the mouth a little bit. And this is a great, uh, I was going to say, place to talk about, like, indication. Uh, I've talked about indication many, many times. Uh, I might make a whole video on indication, but I indication is where you draw... For example, if, you, if I was trying to say, like, this whole thing... Let's say this whole thing was made of scales, like that was the texture of it. I would throw a couple of little scales here in the top of the head, a couple over here, and maybe that's it. And you, what you're saying to the viewer is the entire thing is made of scales without having to do the work because it would just look like a mess with like a view. I mean, it, I mean, you'd have to, it'll take too much time and I mean, it doesn't have to look like a mess. People can't control it, but you can also very easily break the drawing like that. And it gives you a different look if you draw every single scale, you know, for example, if this was made of scales. Um, so instead you indicate it by putting it in small areas that indicates the viewer that this thing is supposed to be covered entirely in scales, but without actually, uh, I'm not gonna give him a neck, actually, I thought about that, but without actually doing it. So, similar to that would be uh, the shadows I'm putting in here. I'm putting them in here. I'm not gonna put them everywhere, but I'm gonna put them enough to make it at least pleasing enough to the viewer. Uh, and I'm only going to put one tone, I believe. I'm not going to throw in uh, a lot of half tones on the outside uh, of, of, the, of the drawing. And I don't want to make them too PC. I want to make them 
connect well enough. What time is it? Let's see. Dang, we're going for 25 minutes. I'm sorry, guys. Hopefully you've been enjoying this, or if you're still here by now, I appreciate it. You're amazing. Uh, that I'm gonna I'm gonna probably gonna end it here. Honestly, uh, a lot of it is just talking about what I do when I doodle. But if you are interested in uh, commenting and saying what's up, I love that. Uh, if you have any issues in drawing, uh, let me know in the comments, and I can try to make a video for it. Uh, if you want. Uh, like I said, to support me, you can uh, get that sketchbook on the link below. And otherwise, I will see you guys in the next uh, video. Or even join my Patreon for $2. For $2, you get a ebook that I created uh, entirely on 10 things I think will make you better now at drawing. And 10 things that if you apply immediately, you will become better and there's no way around it. Um, a lot of the rules of drawing are like rules of drawing, right? They're, they're principles of drawing, right? So principle, and I've, I've said this a hundred times, and I actually took this line from Robert McKee, who is a writer, who is a current, I think, uh, screenwriter, uh, from his book called Story, and he was saying like, principles are, okay, so a rule says you have to do it this way. A rule says you have to do it this way. But a principle is different. A principle is something that says this works and has worked. At, you know, for, for the whole time we've used it. And it's just like a really strong suggestion uh, because there's many ways to do something. But so the, I would say the principles of art are pretty dang close and pretty dang similar. I mean, a lot of this stuff we're talking about is stuff that uh, I mean, I read in like, you know, Leonardo and Da Vinci was doing and uh, you know, a lot of it was this, is the same, but so I, I will leave you with a message of make sure this stuff is fun for you. If this stuff is fun for you, this entire process of learning to draw is gonna be a breeze. I wouldn't say a breeze, let's say, but that's kind of crazy. But I mean, it's gonna be so enjoyable. It's gonna be so much more enjoyable than if you're there and you're stressing out and you're thinking negative thoughts all the time about just kind of being like, oh, I'm never gonna make it. Oh my God, I'm never gonna do this. Oh my God, you know, thinking like that, I mean, it's just not gonna really get you what you want. Um, I mean, if you don't truly believe that you can do it, I mean, you probably never will. Your mind has a way of making stuff happen, uh, putting little things that you do and, and you're doing these little, these little actions, it's gonna, you know, your mind's gonna make it whatever you make it, right? So if you truly believe you can, you, and you, and you work toward it, you're gonna, you will do it. You know, um, if you if you put in the work and you believe it, that's the thing. Don't just believe it and just kick back. You know, <laughs> you gotta believe it, have fun with it, and this whole process is gonna be amazing for you. So that's it. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you guys do like this content, uh, and I will make a lot more of it. So talk to you soon.